Welcome to the Eclectic Thrifter and Crafter, where we thrift and craft with purpose. It's Tea Tuesday on a Friday. And it's Crafty Tuesday on a Friday. Pour yourself a cup of tea and you'll see what mischief I've got myself into. This is my husband in the driveway with his leaf blower. And the story goes, when I was out in the driveway doing some touch-up paint work in the little kitchen, he decided he didn't like the pine needles in the driveway. And you can only imagine what happened to the wet paint. So I had to take apart the kitchen, completely apart, and I had to repaint it. So today we are going to restore the kitchen. We're going to begin with the wallpaper. I didn't show you the repainting process. I thought that was unnecessary. The bad news was when I went to replace the paint, the laurel green I had used before is not being carried anymore. But I did find this color, which for me, it was very 1920s, 1930s, which made me very happy and it worked out just fine. Beginning with the little kitchen restoration, I've decided I'm going to use double-sided tape to put up all of the wallpaper that I'm going to be replacing. And the reason is I discovered that it is actually much easier and much cleaner. I'm taking the suggestion from author Jessica Ridley in her book, The Decorated Dollhouse. This is her book. I did find it on Amazon. For a beginner at miniatures like I am, I would highly recommend this book. It is encouraging in ways of um, using your imagination, not being afraid to use all sorts of objects, and you're not obligated to go out and buy all these little things when you can make them. And you can enjoy them more because you know that you've made them by hand. And again, there is a little bit of jiggling going on. I have not rectified my tripod issue yet because I need a tall stool to attach my tripod to. So now we're going to attach the wallpaper to the walls. I really have grown fond of using this double-sided tape for the wallpaper. You can get these large rolls on Amazon. It's just simple seamstress tape. This has been quite an experience for me. I've learned a lot from making mistakes. I am so happy to be nearly finished. I have one more coat to put on the walls of the on the outside doors on the stonework. It is a wash. I haven't decided what the final depth of the wash is going to be for the final coat, but that is where I am right now as the rest of the house is being assembled in the dining room. See how simple this is to brace, replace this wallpaper? I love the idea of double-sided tape. It's funny that you come across these ideas after, after you've already done something and you think, why did I do that? Why didn't I think about this in the first place? But I had to remove the wallpaper because of the measurement issues. So it was a little bit of an expense in new photocopies of my wallpaper, but it is a learning curve and prototypes, that's what happens when you're doing prototypes. There are little extra expenses because you have to learn from your mistakes. When I shared the 12 rooms of Christmas last year, I had already made the decision to use the double-sided tape. So the wallpaper that you saw was actually just tacked up with little bits of tape because I knew I was going to have to redo some of the walls. I had realized the measurement issues um, and I was going to resolve them in the spring. On the first few warm days in the spring, I actually did that. I took everything apart. Um, I, I had to do it while my husband was away from the house or he would have panicked, but I dismantled everything, solved the issues, and got it put right back together again in a matter of a couple of days. So as I assemble the room boxes 
in the dining room I'm finishing everything off as I go along one room at a time and it's really not going to take very long to um, have it rebuilt in the dining room again just a few days. The delays that the weather caused as well as having to be away from the house and company and everything over the summer I was able to nail down a plan for my electrical and I'll show you how simple it's going to be and it's going to be very easy to access if I want to change anything or repair anything. It is going to be so, so incredibly simple and it's all going to run down to panels of switches that can be controlled from the outside. I had hopes of having this video completed on Tuesday but life got in the way and I was able to get the rest of the details completed today and upload it. For Sunday, I'm going to share with you um, the foundation and how I'm attaching the fixed walls to the various corners where the walls are fixed and where I'm going to be hanging the doors and how I'm going to be hanging them. So that will be Sunday's video. It's not going to be a very long one. Eventually, I'm going to get back to my crafting schedule on Tuesdays and then just working on miniatures on Sundays. I have several ideas I really want to get started on. Electrifying the dollhouse is going to be the very last thing I do. It's also going to be very, very easy. I am not using wire tape because of the size of the dollhouse. Um, it would just be way too much for me. And I really would rather have something that's much easier to repair if necessary rather than having something buried behind wallpaper. This little landing above the stairs and next to the stairs to nowhere was really hard to get my fingers in there but I managed to get it all papered and all tidied and taped down. There was a lot of editing at this point because I kept bumping my head on the camera. My work area is actually very, very tiny. Uh, it's easier down in the garage, but up in, up in the craft room, it's actually a very small section of my counter that I'm able to work on. I decided to attach the molding with just double-sided tape rather than gluing it down this time around. I can always replace it at a later date. You'll see the hole for a fireplace that goes straight through and the reason for that is because on the other side is the library fireplace. There's going to be a light that comes up through the floor that will light up the fireplace as well as the light that will shine from inside the stove so it looks like the stove has red embers in it. I have an idea of what I want my stove to look like. The wood has already been cut for it and I will be assembling that in the next couple of weeks and I'll have that video up for you probably I would say in about two weeks because I'm balancing all sorts of other projects at the same time because it's craft fair season. So there's a lot going on out in the driveway right now. It's getting cold up here. I don't know about where anybody else is but it's getting chilly. I will be assembling about 16 bird feeders and then we'll have the 2024 bird feeder parade just before the first craft fair that is in November. I've changed up the design on one item that I generally have in the craft fair and I'll share that with you on a Tuesday and for another item it's brand new on this coming Saturday I'm having uh, three other ladies over and one lady is going to show me how to make this item and I'll try and share that with you in a video just before the first craft fair. The baseboards and the fascia on the ceiling, this is just made out of veneer that I have cut and ironed together to make a solid piece that I can use for the baseboards. Even though it was unfortunate that there was the paint incident in the driveway, in the end, I was able to resolve the little bits of measurement issues that I'd had with the kitchen. I took care of those. It was so simple. And so I took advantage of the opportunity when having to uh, sand it down and repaint. So my theory is if you get lemons, make lemonade. And that's what I did. I try my best to make lemonade.
Now, a little caveat, I don't think that double-sided tape is a permanent fix for the fascia or the baseboards. I don't think it would travel well. But for me at the moment, this is a temporary thing because I wanted to get this video finished and it'll be fine for a while and then I can go back in there and I can glue it down. You can see that the board that I used there is a little rough when it was cut. I'm just going to put the fascia over it because that part is not really going to be seen because on that side it's a fixed wall. So there we are. All the fascia and the baseboard is done and we're going to move on to carpeting the stairway. I found this fabric at the thrift store. The fabric on top is closest to the cover that I originally had woven on the bead frame and I decided that I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to use a piece of fabric. I thought it would be fun first time around to try and make my own carpeting, which it was, but this time around, just to save time, I chose to do a piece of fabric. And this one almost matched the carpet that I wove on the bead frame, so I was very happy when I found it, and it was only a dollar. I'm going to anchor this down with double-sided tape because as I cut it, and I put the double-sided tape down, it's not going to fray. So you're going to see I'm going to cut that down each side. And the threads will actually stick to the double-sided tape. I listen to a lot of books and movies while I'm working. They keep me company and I discovered the cutest little movie on Netflix, but I bought the DVD. It's called Crazy Rich Asians, and it's absolutely an adorable movie. You have to watch it. It is a must-see. I'm going to start at the base of the stairs and work my way up. I was very fortunate because I got the measurements exactly, so I was very happy with that. I really think this choice of fabric worked out very well. It's a wonderful size of design that suits the stairs. The color is perfect and it's very close to the piece that I constructed on the bead loom. And again, another lesson I learned, this double-sided tape is much better than using hot glue. So I think I'm going to be using a lot of double-sided tape. Now that the double-sided tape has become part of my mental toolbox, I know that that's the first thing I'm going to go to rather than hot glue or regular glue. I have to trim a little bit for it to go around that step to nowhere. It worked out perfectly. I'm really very happy with it. There's just that little bit of piece to put on that step to nowhere. I haven't decided if I'm going to put a little light in there or not. I may. I will keep you posted. Now we're moving on to installing the molding around the doorway. I've made this molding out of veneer. I shared that with you last spring when I was making a series of moldings for the archways and the other doorways. So this is the master shape for the rest of the doorways throughout the house. I've decided to lift that up and get that little piece of painter's tape out of there because it was sticking out the middle. Now on the other side of the doorway there is a quarter inch of veneer that I've used to line the archway sticking out and the reason that is 
it is going to slip in to the doorway of the adjacent room. So everything is going to fit together like a puzzle. The one thing about wood glue, it does not take very long for it to start to set. And I appreciate that. So now we're just going to put some fascia on the top here. And I'm going to do the same thing up there. I'm going to mark it, cut it, and then I'm going to cut away the wallpaper to glue the fascia down. I really do like the way the little kitchen is turning out. I'm very happy with the end results. I am very excited about decorating the kitchen. I'm looking forward to constructing various utensils and decorative items. There are many kitchen items that I have thrifted. But there are certain things that are vintage that I really want to construct myself because I think the real life objects are so pretty. I do want to try and make small decorative items and if I can make molds of them then maybe there are items that I can eventually sell one day. Next Tuesday I am going to share the work of a subscriber. She does lovely work and I only hope to be as talented as she is. I'm going to make something special for her and I might try and get that done on Tuesday and then we'll get it popped in the mail in the next couple of weeks. We just have a couple more pieces to go and I think we're going to be done. These little details take a little bit of time to do but it is well worth it. It's very satisfying in the end. Now we're going to put a little piece of baseboard across the bottom of the stairs. And I am going to use hot glue for that one. And then I think we're all done. Thank you so much for joining me today for this little kitchen remodel. Please like and subscribe. And please share my thrifting and crafting channel with your thrifting and crafting friends. I do welcome your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. Check us out on Instagram and tap that notification button for upcoming announcements of thrifts and crafts. But most of all, have a lovely, lovely day.